Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about counting ovarian antral follicles using ultrasound. So to give a little bit of context into why we would want to do this, as of date, there is no specific test that will tell you exactly how many like eggs or primordial follicles you have in your ovaries. So instead, we use um, antral follicle counts or AMH hormone to test what we would know as like a woman's ovarian reserve. So today we're going to be talking about follicle count, but you should know that the anti-malarian hormone is also a really good indicator of ovarian reserve because it's a hormone that is secreted by the follicles themselves. But most people try to use both of those in conjunction with each other to get a more accurate like reading of what's going on. So first, what is an antral follicle? So as we know, a woman or yeah, a woman is born with like the number of eggs that they're going to have in their body like forever, but then throughout their life, certain follicles will mature. So an antral follicle is the most like matured follicle that is like competing to become the dominant one. So a woman's body is going to have multiple antral follicles and those are normally a predictor. So if you have a higher number of antral follicles, it's seen to be like you have a higher number of eggs. But as a woman's level of like primary eggs go down, then the number of follicles they release in a given day or month will like lessen. So why is antral follicle count useful? This is especially helpful in fertility treatments to even test if a woman should go through IVF. So in specific for IVF, you're going to be using FSH hormone to stimulate these antral follicles and like remove them. So you want to know if a woman will even have enough to have that happen. And so they're normally going to do this count before they even start IVF to see if this can keep going. And then also the number of antral follicle count can also help someone predict when they're going to enter menopause and can also diagnose PCOS, which is actually when you just have way more follicles than normal. So polycystic ovarian syndrome just means your ovaries are hyperandrogenic or they're creating a lot of androgens in normal and releasing way more follicles, which you would think would help fertility, but actually doesn't. And if someone has PCOS, going through IVF could be a problem because you're going to give them even more hormones when they don't actually need them. So when doing an AFC count, it's important to know a specific things about the timing of your patients. So when you're doing the actual count using ultrasound, you want your patient to be in the early follicular phase for it to be the easiest. But according to a generalized study, they decided that you can actually do this count at any time in the menstrual phase, but it is like easier to just count the follicles themselves when you're in your early follicular phase. This is helpful for like a lot of reasons, just because people used to think that they had to be in the first like couple of days of the follicular phase to have this being done, but now they can go in at any time, which is just helpful for scheduling. And then another thing that's useful to know about AFC counts is if women are using hormonal contraceptives, because this can change how many follicles are actually maturing. So some hormonal contraceptives can decrease their levels of follicles, but that doesn't actually mean that they're going to be like entering menopause early or are not as like good candidates for IVF. So in those cases, knowing if a patient's on hormonal contraceptive, then you can like, if you have a low AFC, then you can like say like, okay, let's maybe go off of it for a couple months and then come back to test. But if it's high and they're on hormonal contraceptive, then it's fine and you can continue or use that number as a good predictor still. So AFC in the actual ultrasound exam is used with a transvaginal ultrasound probe, and you are supposed to have a minimum frequency of seven millihertz. And then for just like normal procedure, you want your patient on their back in the lithotomy position. So they're 
feet are kind of up in the stirrups. And then it's important to have a chaperone present when doing this exam because it can be a very like stressful time for the patient too. And you want to make sure that they feel comfortable and feel like safe with all the things that are going on. And then ideally they'll have an empty bladder because this can just help the transducer go through. Right. Let's see here. Yeah. So this is a real, ideally you want to do this count in a real time 2D ultrasound. There was some research done on doing this with a 3D ultrasound, but obviously a lot of hospitals just don't have that capability, but 3D can also make it a good thing. But you're going to want to get a view that's both longitudinal and coronal. And using this probe, you have an indicator that's like at the top and you want to use your thumb kind of on that indicator to kind of know where it is when you're using it on the patient. So a lot of people say just try to align your thumb with the indicator when you're trying to use it. And then you'll use like any other common ultrasound like the gel and then a cover for the transvaginal one specifically. And then you're going to locate the ovary. Normally this is lateral and posterior to the uterus. So you can kind of like locate the probe lateral and point it posterior. And then you will want to find the ovary and then fan through it. And so as you're fanning through it, you're gonna to try to find your best view. That can either be in the longitudinal or the coronal view, but you're trying to find it where it's like at least 50% of the screen. And then you're gonna fan through the ovary and count each follicular structure that is like two to 10 millimeters in diameter. Antral follicles can be less than two millimeters. It's just hard to differentiate if those are actually follicles or if there's something else. So just for consistency sake, it's best to just have this two to 10 millimeter in diameter like cut off so you know you're not like counting something that's smaller. And then also it's important to repeat it on the second plane. So get the best view you can on the first plane count and then repeat on the second plane to make sure and verify what you have. And the accuracy of this is pretty like up in the air sometimes because it's something that can be hard because it's just like these dark structures that you're counting. The best way to increase your accuracy is to count in person. So even though people will take like in the case of Stefano's like um, thing like telehealth, like people will take videos of fanning through the ovary, which is good and can still be helpful. But when you're in person, you can better differentiate between a follicle or a cyst and you can better differentiate between vascular structures by using the Doppler mode. And then when you're in person to differentiate between a cyst and a follicle is if you like slightly probe it and it, the, the thing moves with the ovary, then you know that it's a follicle versus if it didn't move with the ovary, then you would be more likely to say that it's a cyst. And the interpretation of these results can be in a variety of ways, like we talked about. In clinical practice, it can just tell someone in what stage they are close to menopause, if they're should be entering it in like the next couple of years. So if you have a number of follicles in the over, so FNPO is number of follicles in over with the more, more follicles. So it's similar to AFC, but if you have a like one to three count, then you can say like with somewhat certainty that person will probably enter menopause in the next couple of years. And then if you have four to 24, then that's just like a normal. And then if you have higher, then it's at risk for PCOS. And then in response to IVF, which is normally the most times they use AFC, if you have a low ovarian reserve, most of the time IVF like doctors won't even consider using ovarian stimulation in IVF just because it's very like a very low risk that'll actually be like successful. But then as you have more antral follicles, the more likely you can continue on with IVF. And then if you have a really high number of follicles, they also might, again, be wary of like giving hormones just because you have a high risk of having a really intense ovarian response. And I think that's it. Thanks.